move on then to Senator Tom Clonan. Uh, good afternoon. Don't try to keep track of the day. Yeah. It is. It is the afternoon. Yeah. Um, thanks very much. That was that was really interesting, and uh, there were some great points made by colleagues. Uh, just to reference back to Senator Ruan's observations about teaching, like I went to school in Finglas, and none of the teachers, I can't, I can't recall any of the teachers being from Finglas, and uh, my parents didn't hit me, but some of my teachers did, which was extraordinary. And I was explaining this to my 18-year-old daughter, and she said, "Like that's you know, like that's criminal." And when I look back on it, it kind of was kind of a criminal enterprise. So mm. I know that teaching has moved on. And uh, when I was 20, uh, I qualified as a primary school teacher myself. And I did interviews all over Dublin in 1987. And I remember one of the chairpersons of, of a board of management, a priest, said to me that um, he had his doubts about me because he said, you have one foot in primary school teaching. He said, but your other foot, he said, is in Finglas. So there was even an inbuilt sort of scepticism. Um, but I, I, I do know in, in speaking to what Lynn said that, because um, I've just come from Technological University Dublin and there's a school of social care there. We have, um, I'm the Trinity, uh, on the Trinity panel, I know that in the school of social work and, uh, in, in Trinity, that the students there are, are very diverse. So there is that pipeline. I mean, you, I mean, here's me telling you, you know this more than I do. So I think, you know, there's grounds for optimism there. But. My, my questions really look, uh, listening to you, this is an area that I, I'm not really uh, au fait with or that familiar with, um, but it reminds me again of the kind of the disability uh, space, which I am very, very familiar with. And so that churn that you describe of social workers in Tuzla and elsewhere, uh, uh, so this is my first question, I, is that for the same reasons that the HSE can't keep speech and language therapists, occupational therapists, physios, uh, because of the like very difficult working conditions vis-a-vis -vis, uh, very small resource, huge demand. I imagine it's probably the same for social workers in Tuzla and elsewhere. Um, the second question, the second, just leading into the next question, I mean, the harm that we do to children, and I, I know that your service is trauma-informed, and congratulations on, on the rollout, um, but many of the parents whose children have gone into care have been you know, traumatised and harmed themselves. I mean, this Christmas we have three and a half thousand children homeless. I mean, the state and its institutions have a very poor record in, in terms of how they treat children. And um, I think that the parents whose children are, you know, taken from them, put into care, are a symptom of that overall system we have in Ireland. Which is we, like, we really do fail in our duty of care to children and to people with disabilities. Any, any Anybody who's vulnerable in this state um, it's, it's a cold house for people who are vulnerable, whether you're elderly on a trolley, whether you're homeless, whether you're a child, you know, it's, it's, it's really tough. So the service that you're, you're going to provide um, or that you're, you're rolling out, uh, is, is that, pro in, do you, are you aware or do you know in other jurisdictions that these kind of services provided by, by charities or are they provided by the state themselves? And is there a is there a, a country either in the European Union or internationally where you would identify a kind of a model that fits with what your understanding of best practice ought to be or could be? So that's it really. Thank you. Thanks. 